welcome to the course on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communications. Uh, we have been looking closely at the small scale propagation models. Right now, uh, we have covered the flat fading and frequency selective fading. So, we have covered the time and frequency dimensions uh, as you have noticed that we have uh, specified the channel, the wireless channel uh, in the time dimension in the frequency dimension, in the space dimension. Last time, we have said that uh, in the time dimension, we have classified it as slow fading and fast fading. We have described the details. In frequency, we have also described there is flat fading and there is frequency selective fading. So, now we reach the spatial dimension, uh, which we are going to describe, which could be poor scattering or rich scattering. So, we will see how uh, this thing happens. So, to begin with, uh, we will base our expression uh, on whatever we have studied over here. So, based on that, uh, this will be uh, helpful to describe. So, that is why uh, these will become uh, foundations. Uh, so, that is why we have spent quite a lot of time on those topics. So, uh, if we consider that the mobile is moving and let us say there is some measurement at this point, let us let us consider that uh, this is a receive antenna and uh, that the mobile is uh, moving in this direction and uh, uh, over a certain time that is delta t. If we consider a certain time delta t, in this duration of time, the mobile would cross a distance let us say delta x, uh, which is uh, very, very small in this uh, unit of time. So, delta x uh, is equal to the v that is the speed of the vehicle times delta t. So, in this distance, the receive antenna may have been at a location which is separated by delta x or the vehicle could have moved over there. So, since we know that uh, v by c times f c equals to f m, right. Therefore, we could also write v is equal to f m by f c times c and we could write delta x as f m by f c times t times delta t, taking that delta x equals to v times delta t. Therefore, delta x is v times delta t or we could also have f m delta t. That means, this times delta t is equal to delta x times f c divided by c and since c is equal to f c times lambda or lambda c. So, you could write lambda c equals to c by f c or which is delta x upon lambda. So, this particular uh, variable or the product which we have written over here is something which you have encountered before. So, you already know that for isoscale isotropy scattering we have phi h i h i delta t is equal to omega p by 2 where omega is the total received power j 0 j 0 is the Bessel function of the first kind of zeroth order 2 pi f m delta t this expression we had derived before for the correlation. So, basically when we uh, studied this flat fading condition and uh, we were looking at the Doppler spectrum that is uh, how it would uh, go ahead. So, we studied the correlation function based on which we looked at the uh, Fourier transform of that and we arrived at the Doppler spectrum. So, this is the correlation function. So, now uh, we could instead of making it a function of delta t, we could write phi h i using the same expression a function of delta x instead of making it a function of delta t by using this translation and which would become omega p by 2 j 0 2 pi f m delta t is delta x upon lambda. So, this basically tells us that uh, if we are spaced apart by delta x then the correlation of the signal at this point and this point could be expressed by this function 
provided we have isotropic scattering. That means, provided there is isotropic scattering. Remember, this was derived when p theta was taken to be equal to 1 by 2 pi. That means, there is equal probability of rays arriving from all directions. So, there would be equal probability of rays arriving from all directions. Under such condition, we could use the already derived expression to arrive at the correlation of the received signal, which are separated by a certain distance delta x as a function of lambda. Uh, this is uh, very very important and if you would look at the correlation of alpha alpha delta x alpha is the uh, mod of h of t. So, that would be pi by 16 this is just a normalizing factor omega p j 0 squared 2 pi by lambda delta x. So, this is also derived directly from the expression of uh, correlation of alpha and similarly it will be for alpha squared. So, if you would look at this particular expression, uh, what you can get is that at, at delta x equals to at delta x equals to nearly 0 0.38 lambda mu of alpha alpha delta x is equal to 0. So, from this, this is what you get. So, that means, uh, under, under such a condition that means, under the condition where there is isotropy scattering that means, rays arriving from all directions uh, with equal probability. If we have the spacing separated around nearly around lambda by 2, this is roughly lambda by 2, then you get uncorrelated signals. So, if I space them at lambda by 2, this is very, very important result that we have. So, this, this we can remember that uh, when we have two antennas and uh, we are looking at uh, these two antennas. So, when these two antennas are separated by lambda by 2, the signal in this antenna and the signal in this antenna would be uncorrelated. Now, as we bring them closer and closer, the signals are more and more correlated with each other. So, this is one fundamental result and we have derived this for the case where there is equal probability of arrival from all directions. So, this with this we basically move. So, now if, if we if we try to categorize it in terms of rich and poor scattering. Uh, we could get situations where uh, we can have the case that is uh, rays arriving from all directions with equal probability and there could be rays arriving at particular direction. Here p theta equals to 1 by 2 pi, here p theta is not 1 by 2 pi and we have seen certain cases. In one case, we have seen there is a specular component that is there is a k factor the other cases we have seen the Doppler spectrum to be Gaussian and not a Jake spectrum. So, there are uh, certain such uh, situations which we have already seen for uh, Doppler conditions. So, what we will uh, now look at is uh, to, to describe this, this particular situation is described uh, by means of angle spread. See here, when we looked at uh, the dimension of time. Uh, we had uh, said there is uh, when it is slow or fast fading, we had uh, described in terms of the Doppler spread. Here we had the term delay spread and similarly here we would have angle spread. In this case, we had transmitted a single tone, but that was received as a Jake spectrum when there was 2 d isotropy scattering or some other ways. Here, when a delta function was transmitted, what was received was echoes of the delta function in the delay axis. So, a delta function was spread in time and we had in the delay axis, we had the delay spread, the excess delay and here. Uh, even though there is transmission from one direction, because of scattering from multiple directions, you get an angular spread of the received signal, you get an angular spread. So, these are the description in the three dimensions and uh, here we will see uh, what are the effect of it and how it is described. So, uh, typically if you look at a mobile station, uh, usually the base station is at a height in most cases the base station is at a height and the mobile is usually surrounded by buildings 
and lot of scatterers. That is usually the scenario. That means, uh, the rays that come, they get reflected from different scatterers and so on. So, usually at the mobile location, we are going to get signals arriving from all directions with equal probability. This is more or less uh, true, but if you look at the base station, I mean suppose there are multiple antennas at the base station. It is not true that rays are coming from all directions with equal probability. So, that means, the angular spread at the mobile is not the same as the angular spread at the base station and this is very, very fundamental. This is also very, very important in, in deriving certain results. So, we describe angular spread as a spread of angle of arrival. as a spread of angle of arrival or A O A of the multipath components. Multipath components or the angle of departure, if it is the receiver it is angle of arrival, if it is transmitter it is angle of departure. So, if psi A of theta is the average power of average power as a function of angle of arrival, then we could define theta root mean squared as square root of integrate from minus pi to pi theta minus theta bar, the mean angle of arrival psi a, that means the power at the receiver coming at different angles, the theta divided by the normalization factor, which is psi a of theta d theta and theta bar is the mean angle of arrival, which could be again defined as minus pi to pi theta psi d theta again divided by the normalizing factor psi a of theta d theta. So, this is this is basically the average power uh, as a function of angle of arrival. So, as a function of theta, we are normalizing it by at the denominator and uh, this particular thing uh, would cause uh, space selective fading and uh, usually you would define coherence distance, you would define the term coherence distance. See again, if we go here, we had coherence time In, in the time analysis, we had coherence bandwidth in the frequency analysis and here we have coherence distance in this space analysis. So, in coherence time we said that coherence time is inversely proportional to the Doppler frequency, the max Doppler frequency coherence bandwidth is inversely proportional to RMS delay spread or coherence time is inversely proportional to the Doppler spread, coherence bandwidth is inversely proportional to the delay spread. Similarly, coherence distance would be inversely proportional to the angle spread. This means that as the Doppler frequency increases, the coherence time decreases. That means, the faster it fluctuates, the faster it fluctuates the distance of time for which it is coherent is less. Similarly, over here the more is the spread less is the coherence bandwidth. Here also it is talking about the same thing more is the distribution of the angle of arrival uh, lesser is the coherence distance and less is the spread larger is the coherence distance. So, that means uh, what we can say from this coherence distance is inversely proportional to angle spread. Let us write this. So, that means, uh, we can say that at the receiver, that means in, in this point where uh, signals are arriving from all directions, uh, the coherence distance is smaller, because angular spread is larger and here coherence distance is uh, larger, much, much larger, because angular spread is less. So, at the mobile, 
uh, it is advantageous for us that we can place uh, two antennas which are close to each other. So, we can place two antennas uh, which are close to each other and they are uncorrelated. So, when they are close to each other uh, they would be uncorrelated and uh, whereas, at the base station they need to be spaced far apart to get uncorrelated signal. Now, just uh, look at uh, the description that we gave at this point is uh, probably we required a larger coherence time. Uh, we we would like to have probably larger coherence time. Uh, of course, there are merits and demerits. Uh, again, we may like to have a larger coherence bandwidth again with merits and demerits. With coherence distance uh, same uh, does apply. That means, here uh, in one case uh, when we are discussing uh, equalization we said that if the signal uh, is experiencing slow fading that means, over the signal bandwidth there is no fluctuation over the sig over the symbol duration there is no fluctuation and over the signal bandwidth there is no fluctuation. That means, uh, if, if we would uh, draw a signal time frequency grid in a way that let uh, this be the frequency axis let this be the time axis. So, if this is the time frequency space a signal occupies and the channel is nearly flat over this space uh, equalization would be easy. Whereas, when we talk about the, uh, the spatial dimension, uh, we have the x axis let us say. So, we are kind of finding out over what distance would the signals be uncorrelated uh, is defined as the coherence distance. So, now in this case what is of interest to us is uh, how close is it. The closer it is the better it is for us compared to the coherence time or coherence bandwidth situation. Here we would have loved to have a longer coherence time because uh, and a longer coherence bandwidth uh, because uh, we could do with easy equalization. Of course, there are problems because uh, that would mean once the signal is in a certain state uh, at the because of the channel, uh, the signal or the channel would not come out of that state very fast if the coherence time is long or if the coherence bandwidth is very large. Uh, whereas, here the situation is not a function of uh, time of frequency it's with space. So, if coherence distance is small we could place uh, two antennas close together. So, if we have a mobile uh, which is let us say 6 inches or 5.5 inches uh, wide and uh, if we take uh, the frequencies of operation let us say 2400 megahertz or so we could easily place two antennas uh, on that phone. Whereas, at the base station we need to place them far apart, but again uh, the distance would be manageable. Now, uh, this uh, we would uh, this, this is uh, this is one of the very very interesting things that we have at hand. Now, if we if we look at uh, this particular uh, expression, uh, what we see is that it is also a function of lambda. That means longer lambdas uh, would mean uh, smaller values over here. So that would affect the coherence uh, coherence distance. So there again, what we get is uh, smaller uh, very very small values of lambda would mean again the coherence distance is short compared to larger values of lambda. So the frequency is also affecting the operation over uh, in, in this particular dimension as well. So, uh, usually uh, we would find that uh, at the base station uh, the coherence distance at the base station that means uh, this particular picture at the base station uh, the coherence distance is roughly let us say 5 lambda uh, whereas, here uh, it would be nearly uh, 0 0.5 lambda roughly. I mean that is how uh, that is how it is. So, if you would uh, take 2 d isotropy scattering at lambda by 2 it is uncorrelated at 0 0.25 uh, this correlation becomes 70 percent or so. So, we would like to have it uh, we would like to have lambda spacing uh, sorry antenna spacing lambda by 2 in order to be uncorrelated. Whereas, at base station this distance becomes around 5 lambda or so because angle of arrival is nearly around uh, 20 degrees to 30 degrees in, in that range. <coughs> Okay. So, uh, this, this is one of the very important things that we are moving into when we look at the spatial channels. So, now we, we would like to look at one particular characteristics uh, of the channel and that is known as uh, wide sense stationarity uncorrelated scattering because that we would require to describe what is called a homogeneous channel and this is one of the important assumptions uh, that is made uh, in the study of uh, wireless channels. So, if, if we look at uh, the expression for the channel coefficient that means, we would usually write it as h uh, t comma tau and we take h conjugate uh, at t plus delta t comma tau 
and we take the expectation of it. Uh, what we are talking about is the correlation in time. So, this is t right and uh, we said that this is r tau r r delta t comma tau. That means, this is not dependent on t, it is dependent only on the lagged time between the two channel coefficients. And uh, if you take the uh, Fourier transform and uh, we would write the, the uh, scatter function as s is equal to minus t u by 2 to t u by 2 h of t comma tau e to the power of minus j 2 pi and let us put this frequency nu t d t. That means, I have taken the Fourier transform in the, in the time domain and in the limit that t u tends to infinity, we are going to get uh, and we take expectation of s tau comma nu. I am just changing the location of the variable, so that it is easier s conjugate tau comma we have nu 1 and nu 2 at two different frequencies. This would be equal to 0 if nu 1 is not equal to nu 2. This is one of the results that we are using. This comes from wide sense stationarity. If you would remember, we applied wide sense stationarity to arrive at this particular condition. Now, again if you would uh, use wide sense stationarity on this and you look at the Fourier transform of this, that means you are looking at the scatter function, take the expectation of it, uh, you are going to get this result when nu 1 is not equal to nu 2. What does it mean is that uh, two different uh, Doppler frequencies, uh, they are uncorrelated. I mean that means, uh, the channel at two different Doppler frequencies are uncorrelated and this is because of a famous paper by Bellow 1963. Those who are interested, uh, they can look at it. And along with that, there is also this uncorrelated scattering U s uncorrelated scattering, uh, which says that expectation of h of t comma tau 1 times h of t comma tau 2 is equal to 0, if tau 1 is not equal to tau 2. So, what it means is that, if we look at this diagram, which we had drawn before, if this is the tau axis and this is the t axis and this is h of t comma tau. So, at tau 1, we have an impulse that means, we have sent an impulse, we have received an echo and this is fluctuating with time. Then at another tau 2, this also we have seen, there is another echo which is coming. So, what it says at every instant of time, at every instant of time, if we, if we try to take the product and do the an averaging the result is 0. That means, this and this are not correlated. These two are uncorrelated. So, that is that is the result of uncorrelated scattering. Now, this would give rise to the lagged frequency correlation or expectation of h f 1 tau h 1 t times h conjugate of f 2 t. This is equal to the correlation function of delta f at t. This we have already seen. What it means is that, uh, if we take the Fourier transform, that means now we are taking the Fourier transform across this tau e to the power of minus j 2 pi f tau d tau integral 0 to tau max of h t comma tau. This is what we have to take. So, we are taking at two different frequencies. So, if we, we are getting it as a function of frequency, we get the transfer function, the channel transfer function. So, if we make the assumptions that at two different delays, the channels are uncorrelated, the result we get is the frequency correlation function is not dependent on the frequency, but only on the lag. That means, if I take the Fourier transform across this axis, I am going to get the uh, transfer function. That means, h of f at a particular instant of time, this is f. So, the correlation between this point in frequency and this point in frequency is dependent only on the gap and not an f 1 and f 2. So, again if I would take these two points in frequency f f 3 and f 4, if this gap and this gap is the same, the correlation would be the same. So, that is the lag frequency. So, this is the famous uh, white sense stationarity uh, uncorrelated uh, scattering channel model. So, with this uh, we would move on uh, to describe the homogeneous channel for spatial condition. So, basically here what we have what we have talked about is uh, second order stationarity in 
the time and frequency domain. So, that is what is described by Whiteson stationarity uncorrelated scattering. So, similarly, uh, there is also the second order stationarity in the uh, space domain and that is that gives rise to the homogeneous channel, the homogeneous channels. Uh, so, here the assumption that we make is that the statistical behavior of H tau T d. Now, we have the third dimension. This is the delay, this is the time, this is the space okay, is locally stationary in space over several tens of the coherence distance d c. So, previously we have said that the coherence distance is inversely proportional to the angular spread and now what we are talking about is the homogeneous channel which says that over a certain region uh, which is several tens of coherence distance. Distance is of course, uh, x axis or the y axis. So, that means, uh, we are talking about the y axis or x axis. So, it is the space. So, several tens of coherence distance in this uh, what we have is homogeneous channel that is which is described in the form that E of h tau t d and h of tau t d plus delta d is equal to the correlation function which is a function of tau t and delta d and not of d. That means, a lag space correlation lagged space correlation. That means, over a certain region in space uh, the, the correlation between two locations the signal at this location and the signal at this location which is separated by a certain distance is not dependent upon this location or this location, but only upon the separation. So, that is uh, what is homogeneous channel and uh, this is uh, this is very very important. So, along with white sense stationarity uh, if we have white sense stationarity which gives us that uh, uh, the correlation function is dependent only on uh, the lag time and which gives rise to that two Doppler the channels at two Doppler frequencies are uncorrelated along with we have uncorrelated scattering which gives us that the channel coefficients at two delays are uncorrelated and uh, that would bring rise that would give us that uh, the, the, the channel at two different frequencies are correlated only by the separation in frequencies and that is extended to homogeneous channels that means, uh, the signals at two dif different points in space are correlated as a function of only the separation distance and nothing else. So, here it is giving rise to separation as delta t, here it is separation in delta f and here it is separation of delta d. So, this again gives rise to the result that signals coming again s is the scatter function at two different theta theta 1 and if I take the scatter function at tau 2 theta 2, this would be 0 if theta 1 is not equal to theta 2. So, that means, uh, signals coming at two different directions are uncorrelated that is what this gives results in. So, that means, two different theta 1 signals at these two are uncorrelated, uh, signals at tau 1 and tau 2 are uncorrelated, signals at f 1 two different Doppler frequencies are uncorrelated. So, that is what the dual description of white sense stationarity uncorrelated scattering uh, homogeneous channels give rise to. So, this particular channel S is described as uh, H of tau T x instead of d we are writing x is equal to minus pi to pi S of tau T theta e to the power of minus j 2 pi sin theta times x by lambda c d theta. So, this is this is what we have uh, 
the expression the relation between H and S. So, the Fourier transform relationship between H and S. So, this is also known as a scatter function. Uh, so, this is the arena uh, in which uh, we will be uh, discussing the rest of the course. So, this is very very important uh, assumption that we will use in whatever analysis that we are going to do in this work. Thank you.